Hello and welcome to Discover Energy Work. And we have got something amazing for you today. Well, I think we have, which is Shoshana Weinberg. And Weinberg, I used to live in Germany and I would, I would look out behind my house, there was the vineyards and the vineyards are the vine bags. And I saw them and it's so beautiful to walk in the vine bag. It's just a lovely, lovely feeling. This, the, we get so much joy from, from wine and, and the viticulture the wine culture. And actually, I think Shoshana has nothing to do with wine. But I tell you what, she has a lot to do with healing and energy. And I've got to tell you, when I first came across Shoshana, I was like really bowled over by this incredible energy of real positivity. And like, um, you know, like somebody, when you're on the phone with them, you immediately feel like you're an important person because you're the person that they're talking to. And I just had that feeling. And I really, really enjoyed that with having that with Shoshana. And so I said, Shoshana, okay, so I know you've been like, you're quite well known in Hong Kong as being the, the, the um, inspiration and creative uh, force in the four seasons and bringing great new ideas there. A lot of people were talking about what you did there, but I want to know why have you like, you've made a big change. And, and since December now you're actually, you, you, you use the word and I don't know, I don't want to like use it too because some people are a bit sensitive, but you still like, you've become a witch and I'm like, yeah, witch, witch, but <laughs> you know, you've, you've, you've really changed. So first I should say, Hey, Shoshana, thank you so much for coming on the show. Mm, thank you so much for having me. It's so fun. This is my first per podcast. Really? Oh, yeah. that's excellent. Well, I, <laughs> I can't imagine that, that, you, that I'm the first, but I mean, it, it's great. I think you've got, There's you know, we talked for everything, right? Well, well, we talked last time and I was just talking with you and talking to you. I thought, oh, wow, I think you're just going to be the most incredible guest because you've just got such a great um, enthusiasm about you. And I just like, I was really excited to have you on the show, definitely. Um, and you, the, one of the things you, you told me about is you kind of had an energy connection quite early. But so what does energy mean to you? What is it? What is energy? Well, that's a big question. How long do we have? <laughs> oh, okay. I know. Um, I'm awful. Okay. You can just say, well, I'll tell okay. you how it started. Yeah. Once there was okay. this little girl. Yeah, it did. It started for me when I was a little girl. So energy for me was, and it's kind of silly and, you know, sharing it to the world. Hopefully I can get a few laughs and humor out of people. But um, I was this really curly headed Jewish girl in a world full of very straight headed blonde girls. Mm. And so um, that weren't Jewish. So I was always quite different. I was used to being different. So that was mm. fine. But um, I used to take my tears into the bathroom. I was one of four girls in the house, the youngest. And so I used to just sit on the toilet and cry. Um, and then I found that as I got a little bit older, and I'm talking older, like seven, eight, hmm. I used to sit on the toilet and I used to pray to God. And this was the Judeo Jewish God um, for the things that I wanted. So I started manifesting things from a very young age, you know, literally sitting on the toilet and we, asking we, maybe for... Maybe we've got something. We can do toilet manifestation workshops. Yes, it you have to, worked. We just like put little toilets on the, in, the, in the class. But joking aside, how did you feel? Uh, I, I actually totally relate to that because when I was a little boy, I, I, was, I was bullied quite badly and I had a lot of time to myself and I would connect in a different way. But how did you know for you as a little seven-year-old that you'd manifested something. Can you give me an example? Well, I didn't know. That's a thing. I was doing it with this. You, the question was energy, right? So it mm. was an intuitive thing for me that I would go in there. I would pray to God. I would literally just, you know, ask, please, please, you know, look up and ask, please, 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 you know, I need this. I mm. need that. I'm, I'm distraught over this. And I, I was talking to this mm. energy source. And although, you know, we, we were educated about God, um, you know, I really felt that deep connection and, and that deep sense of prayer, um, which I, I people know. struggle with. 
I, you know, there's something today. funny. There's something funny about having no other option except to say, have a conversation with God and, and yeah. like to totally give up everything and just say, you know, can you just help? I don't, yeah. I'm at the end. I don't know anymore. Yeah, and and can, to be so oh. young and do that, you yeah. know, I mean, one thing to do it, you know, in, in my 40s, but, um, you know, I started sensing then that there was something special with my connection. And then mm -hmm. we moved very shortly after that, we moved to the country Okay. And um, I became even more isolated, let's say, from, you know, the people that were around me. And hmm. I just had the trees and the, the river that, that flowed behind us. And hmm. I had this amazing owl that lived there. And I had a beautiful hawk that lived there. And they became my friends. My sisters were all older and into other things. So um, I became friends with the forest as as mm. we do mm. um i think that's where the witchiness comes out but mm. um you know i just really found that there was a connection to walking barefoot and um you know feeling the moss and you know going swimming in the in the river and you know connecting in with the, you know hearing the wind you know thinking the wind is talking to me you know all yeah. of these things oh, that's i was beautiful I was young, you know, I was, I was very young and I, this was, this is what my energy was, right? This is what my connection was. I, I got to share an anecdote, a little anecdote. I, I was teaching a class uh, many years ago in Germany. I mean, been involved in this like for way too long. And this one lady, she, she, she'd done the class and she said, I remember this. And she said, she used to sit against the tree and the tree would take her up in the sap to the top of the tree and she'd be able she'd be one with the tree and she'd be able to look out from the top mm. of the tree and i'm like i'm totally taken back to her story of, of and and that's you in a way and maybe you had a yeah. different connection but it was just so natural just like oh hello mr tree um, oh yeah it, they were my friends i mean my children now you know when we go for a walk which is you know every day it, it, it's strange if we haven't hugged a tree, you know, but I don't mean like, mm. you know, we're tree huggers. I like, mean, like we're like. In what a great, lovely tree. Oh, I love that tree. You and, know, like and that. We're, we're feel, our hearts are mm. like pumping. And so you mm. see, you know, mm. my two older kids, my, my mm. little one on my back and we're just, you know, we're all around these trees mm. and you, the feeling that you can get mm. and, and the messages that you can get from, these living beings, um, for me, that's the energy, you know, that's how we mm. feel energy by connecting in to nature. And, you know, I'm, I was mm. so lucky because my father used to take us camping and um, mm. we, we camped everywhere you can imagine. And that's just what we used to do. So, you know, mm. I learned fire, how to start fire, how to respect fire. I, I the mm. elements became very useful to me as tools that were okay. almost like a tool belt. Um, but today I think that it is all encompassing um, my ability to, you know, feel energy very powerfully. Hmm. Um, and then as I got older, yes, please. Well, no, I'm kind of, sorry. I'm just kind of curious because as you got older, I mean, you did tell me about this story of your grandmother then. Mm. Can, do you want to tell everybody that story? Sure. Yeah, I'd um, love to. Was that was that the next thing? Am I jumping ahead? Well, no, I I, I actually I would have forgotten that. So thank you for bringing yeah. for bringing that up. Um, my my beautiful grandmother, my maternal mother, grandmother. She um, her name was Lucille, and she used to spend a lot of time with us. And her, she had terrible arthritis. I mean, she was you know typical Ashkenazi Jew eating terribly, and um, mm. she. Um, you know, I had these painful knees. So I would go out into the woods and come back and I would chew up all these herbs. And literally I, I knew them, like I knew which ones made me throw up. I knew the ones that were helpful. Mm. I knew the mm. ones that stopped the bug bites, you know, already mm. this was, I was probably, I don't know, I was probably 10, 11, I, I maybe a little bit older. Right. Um, and so I had chewed up this whole poultice and I, I put it on her knees and um, wrapped it and she, she had just kind of chuckled and smiled at me and said, I reminded her of her great grand, 
mother and how, you know, it had passed down, obviously, maternally through us. Well, it really does. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, we yeah. know that, like, we know that from research that, that um, uh, good information as well as bad information, well, we know bad information, actually, trauma that gets passed down genetically, but yes. definitely uh, good information, why not? And, um, and so, so you, wait a minute, you, you just picked the plants. She didn't tell you to pick the plants. She just said, I'm going to. Oh, I knew the stuff. plants already. You yeah. knew them already. So you yeah. just like, this is going to be good. That's, that's what, um, um, that's what we call like seven cents really, isn't it? That was totally what I would consider it. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, I was already talking to the plants. I was already, I knew, I knew them. I didn't have books about them. I didn't, but, but around that time, um, I did get a book that was by an Ayurvedic doctor who brought, I don't know how I got this. I'm still trying to remember how I got this. Um, and, um, she talked a lot about, uh, natural healing and this was back in the eighties, uh, maybe early nineties. Uh, no, it was definitely the eighties, um, late eighties. So, you know, there was a, there was a book written that had somehow landed into my, maybe my mom had it. I don't know, but, um, that started maybe the formal education of what I had done, you know, outside was like, Oh, you mean people actually do this, right? You know, this isn't just, you know, I'm playing outside, like people actually make a living out of healing with these plants, let's say. Um, yeah. yeah. And I, Realization. I, I've got this picture and I just want to share it with you because I think, you know, my, my teacher did, uh, he was a professor of Chinese medicine and, um, and he would do acupuncture with direct perception so he could feel the points. He just like, yeah. oh, you've got that problem. I can feel the points that you need. And, yes. and he would say that the traditional Chinese medicine comes from that same kind of thing, that the people would go up to a plant and they would connect with the energy of the plant. They would feel whether it was cool or hot, whether, it, whether they were, which emotion in them was moved just by connecting with it. And then having a dialogue, you know, question and answer with the plant and, and actually just um you know connecting on another whole other level and i'm just reminded by what you're saying is that you had a like a real communion and it's obviously yes. it's a moving i've obviously moved you with that set <laughs> no i just closed the door i heard the kids coming back in all right so. <laughs> smart move smart move yeah oh wow yeah my my sister is a chinese medical doctor mm. and um now over, you know, I don't know, 20 some odd years, she would say she does acupuncture the same way is um, she can feel, she can literally feel the points popping mm. out at her. Yeah. Um, she's kind of left, you know, whatever the formal education behind her and mm. she's gotten great results with that. So, yeah. And, you know, I, it's, it's interesting because um, I, I went on to discover more and more and more. And it wasn't until I was in university when I found Robin Rose Bennett, who was my first formal education of um, herbal medicine. And she was the wise woman. She was the first apprentice of Susan Weed, who is kind of like the goddess wise woman out there of herbal mm. medicine. And then Robin Rose Bennett was her first apprentice and I was Robin's first apprentice. So, mm. um, you know, we, we would go to the plants. She would take me to the, the woods in New Jersey. I was in New York city and we would, it didn't matter if it was winter, spring, summer, it did not matter what season, no shoes. Um, and we would have to sit with the plants before harvesting. And, mm. you know, even before harvesting, when she was teaching me, it was kind mm. of, you need to, you have to understand where this plant grows, how it grows through mm. the seasons, mm. how old is the plant, mm. what grows around the plant. Mm. And mm. then you need to like, listen to the plant. If you don't listen, like mm. truly mm. hear the plant, don't pick it. Mm. Oh, and that's how, that's how I learned how to, you know, pick medicine and harvest. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it was, it was a real respect and we had to offer something. So I could never just 
you know, grab. I had to, mm. you know, sit, pray, mm. listen, hear, smell, you know, all the senses. Mm. And then I had to offer mm. something. Mm. So something that I had that was, you know, precious to me, I had to give to the plant. And, and that could be a feeling. It didn't have to be a thing. You know, it had to be like a true feeling that was inside me that, that I offered up. Um, because plants obviously work from more of the heart focus, the heart center. We had a heart connection. We mm. have a heart connection. Mm. Mm. So, um, yeah, so that was um, in my, you know, early 20s is when I had my first real kind of formal. And I was like, oh, this makes sense. This is, I, this I, is amazing. Um, yeah, and then, and then it moved, it moved on. I went from wise woman healing, which I, I was with her for all of university. Um, and then I decided at the end, I studied religion and sociology. So I was very interested in understanding right. spirit and people. And at the same time, how to heal those people through the herbal medicine. So I, I had already kind of started with these three things that were going to be put together eventually, which I didn't realize, but that's what I was doing. And then as I graduated, um, I went with my, my dear friend and we put out a mat, we closed our eyes, we put our hands together and we landed in Asia and we took off for close to a year traveling in Asia, going from marketplace to marketplace to marketplace, mm. um, all land travel, passing borders that probably were not allowed to be passed um, mm. through land. And um, we just followed the markets. And it was there that I found in the markets, I found sustainable living. I found doctors that everyone came down to these mm. like hubs. This was in 2000. So it was kind of like, you felt like this uh, feeling of everyone coming down, getting their mm. teeth fixed, their eyes tested, herbal medicine going around, the, the cows are being slaughtered, the chickens, the trade was happening, tea, everything was mm. happening, midwives, mm. everything was happening. And then people would go back up into their, you know, their, you know, places. And then the next month they would gather again. So, mm. You know, after a year of doing this, I was on the way back. My mom had found me and she said, you know, your sister's getting married. You have to come back. So plane back home. And um, I knew there were three things I had to do, which was learn to live off the land, learn to heal myself and learn to heal others. I knew that's what I was put on this earth to do. And, um, and so I did that. I just started picking away. I worked on a farm in Maine and learned how to grow um, learned how to kill animals. I was a vegetarian. I stopped eating meat when I was seven. Um, and so I was, um, you know, I, I had to kill animals to stay on that farm. And right. so after my first chicken, I had my first meat since I was seven years old and, right. um, I ate it like, you know, like a carnivore. Mm. Um, and so after learning how to, you know, sustain and do market and make jams and pick carrots and, you know, just the whole thing. I also had this beautiful experiences up in Maine. It was freezing. It's cold. We were almost on the border of Canada. Yeah. Yeah. And in the early mornings, um, because we didn't have like proper showers, we would go out into the ocean. It was freezing. It was summer, but it was so cold. And it had this big, thick seaweeds that we would have to swim through in order to get out to like the clear and these loon these birds would be there waiting for us but when we would swim through them our skin was so soft yeah i bet seaweed like spa treatment right yeah i know so <laughs> you didn't know at the time but how many spa treatments have i made from that one experience um so then um, after working on the farm, I uh, found a yoga program because I wanted to study how to, you know, can heal myself. I learned how to sustain off the land. Now I need to learn to heal myself. I flew to Mexico and I found Swami Satchidananda. Stop me at any time if I'm talking too much. No, it's amazing. I'm just like, I'm like, you're just answering my question. I think I'm, you, we, I'm, you're reading the questions from inside my head. You just like, <laughs> you met a Swami. So what is a Swami? Swamis are like they're monks basically. Okay. Um, and um, so I met Swami Satchidananda, um, who he was the first kind of monk, let's say, guru teacher um, to open Woodstock 
in in the 60s or 70s he okay. did the own to open woodstock and mm. so he he was quite a an idol let's say mm. um mm. but he was he was in his older years when i met him mm. and um you know, he was incredible and so i flew to mexico to take one of his trainings and um in mexico um here's part two. I, you know, I, I went through the whole training and I was there for two months. It was very intensive. The training what? Um, I mean, we, yoga, yoga. meditation. Oh, yoga. So you started uh... yoga, meditation, yoga sutras. Okay. Um, you know, all, all of the Vedas were, were present in this training. Um, it was very, very inclusive, very in depth. We had to fast. We had to do all the Kriyas. We were throwing up you know, you can imagine, we were doing everything you can imagine to cleanse. And, um, but here in this place, we were offered a treatment. Um, and this treatment was from my, one of my dearest friends who will be someone that you definitely interview. She's in her seventies now. Great. And um, she's a curandera, which means like a healer in, in, in Mexico. Yes. Oh, wow. And, um, traditional healer. And she gave me this treatment that left me speechless for two days. I didn't eat. Now that must be I, something. It went, I went into a complete, uh, turn off. And, um, so I learned about myself. Okay. I learned a lot about myself during those months, but it wasn't enough. So I went from there and I flew to New Mexico and I studied with Vasant Lad, who brought Ayurvedic medicine to the United States. Oh, wow. And so I studied with him for close to two years and I learned about everything you can imagine of Ayurvedic. I was studying the, I was studying Sanskrit, you know, I was reading Chakra Samasati. I was, you know, we, we, we went so deep and we would sit every night with Fasant Lad to hear him just talk about even the rock has consciousness, he would say. Right. I mean, he just, right. he was so beautiful. And so I learned a system. That's what I learned. I learned how to heal people with a system right that, just, that was kind of missing this kind of structure yeah so i you needed could say, a structure yeah yeah we know yeah. we have that in the martial arts we say everything is structure and then yes. then you re, then you reach freedom but you have to start with structure and you start that's with nothing right. you go through structure and then you return to nothing that's right well you know robin rose bennett was like back in the day she was structure you know i mean she yeah, was sounds intense. like it. Yeah, yeah she it was. Sounds... She was very strong. Um, yeah, I love it. But so, th I, when I finished the Ayurveda, uh, Vasant Lad said to me, "You know, I'm placing you back in New York City with Pratima Raichur, who was his dearest friend, and she okay. ran a skincare clinic, an mm -hmm. Ayurvedic skincare clinic. In so New here York. I am in New York. Here I am. I had." yoga, I had Ayurveda, I worked on farms, and now I'm going to start working again. And um, it felt good to make some money. Um, and I mm. just dove into this. And after three years, I had rebranded, I had remarketed, I had found this kind of salesperson inside myself right. and made her business, you know, just flourish. Um, and at the same time, learned everything about skincare, um, which, you know, was not my focus at all. Amazing. And um, pretty much after three years, she's like, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, you take it. And then that's when I knew I had to go. Um, and so I went, flew to Bisbee, Arizona, and I had the amazing opportunity to study, study herbs again with Michael Moore, who was passed on. He had Southwest Botanical School of Medicine, and he was... He was incredible and structure. You know, we learned about how to make medicine, you know, menstruums and everything was calculated. And we learned about the body systems and anatomy and went yeah. so deep into mm. the heroic side of herbalism. Mm. Um, and that was truly a unique experience, mm -hmm. um, which I learned so much. And then it, it sounds like, like you just like, when did you breathe? That's what I'm asking. It sounds like Never. you've just been incredible, like constant, like I, I know I've got to do this and I've got to do it now. And I've got to, you know, I've got to 
I mean, it's, it's, it sounds fantastic. It like oh, and I want to ask you, she said, take it, take it, take it. What did she mean? Take it. I don't know. She what wanted that means. me to take her business. She wanted me to sit where she would sit and she, 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 it was, you know, I, oh, I was doing it, so you know, beautiful. Yeah. She was, she was gorgeous. Um, she was so also no hard. Ego. I had very difficult teachers, I have to say. Right. Um, but oh. all really amazing. I learned so much. Mm. Um, I did the work. You know, I think that that's an important lesson yeah, for yeah. me and for everyone is you have to do the work. You have to plant yeah, your cabbages. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. just like become an herbalist or you can't just, you know, become an acupuncturist. You have mm. to you have to do the work to get there yeah, um, the, on yeah. yourself first and then to be able to see in others. And I think a lot of people are missing that, but, um, well, do you think that's, um, I mean, okay, I'm with, it's kind of a dog leg, but I mean, or a red herring, but I, I feel like energy, energy work is now everybody wants like an immediate result with energy work. They want like, it's gotta be like yeah. s suddenly a flash of light and they're better. If body work, if I do one session with somebody they you know, they're like, Oh, well, you know, it's not better after one session. I'm like, uh, your body needs to change you know it takes time <laughs> and there's it's like um sometimes you can overdo you know the body can only take so much i mean it, it everything's different i mean that's the thing isn't it everything is different every Everyone's individual different. is different and so that's what i you know what i love about what you're saying is i love this this uh communion with the person and the communion with the partner and and literally you're a a medium in that you you're connecting the two and you're saying like i've connected with the plants i i know this character i know the plants i know its qualities and characteristics and then you connect with somebody i'm assuming and then you go oh you you need to make friends with this guy yeah you know what i mean yeah it's um, interesting you say that because um the other day i was um I was called um, to clean someone's house, let's say, that she she was getting a divorce and changed house and she wanted to do a cleansing. And so um, I brought cedar and sage. Well, that's energy for, work. When did this yeah. happen? What, oh, you, you're, just like, you're just like, that's, amazing, that's incredible. That's great. I mean, oh, okay. it's all energy yeah. work. I mean, I think plants are energy. When you're sitting with a plant oh, and feeling sure. its energy, it's totally energy work. And, and on a high level, by the way. Yes. Um, but, 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 and you just went straight into that level, but, but when did you connect with like clearing houses? And... Oh, um, well, so I started with kind of, I don't want to say the curanderism. I know I studied, yeah, you know, yeah. with, you know, I didn't add Mexican... that in there, but I have done much work with traditional medicine and, and traditional mm. healing mm. practices. So, um, wow. I learned to use copal which is a, you know, a resin from a beautiful, beautiful tree okay. in, in Mexico. And the sacred copal is from Oaxaca in, in Mexico. And um, then I also learned, because I lived out in, in the desert, um, I learned how to cleanse with as the, the native, the first people. Oh in the sage for clearing i you know i you know i connected in with you know many wise elders um and learned their their trade which they offered to me um right. because i lived on a reservation for a while mm. um you know there, there's there's been a lot i can't fill it all um, i know well that's what but, i'm realizing i'm like you know we've only got well we haven't got a limit on time but i mean like i, I guess there's always a limit on time isn't there um, yes, at some point our bodies yeah. want to go to sleep, you know? Um, so, so you're going, so you're going to somebody's house to, to clear. Sorry. I, I jumped in there. Cause it's yeah, so and, exciting. And yeah. So no, but important. Thank you for asking that question. And, and so I, I going to her house, I've got my cedar and my sage and, you know, I, I walk in, you know, I kind of assess the situation and then I start, you know, and, um, she just like with her, her mouth dropped. She didn't know what to expect. And, you know, I'm saying some things, I don't know who I'm talking to. And, you know, I've called this person, you know, you know I'm going around and, you know, doing I know. what I do. Yeah. And um, you just, you kind of forget everything I say is 
just coming and there's no i don't know what it means to anybody but i don't care either <laughs> it just you know it just kind of comes and okay you know you know and i hear the messages hear the calls you know and right, right. um but when i was done and this is to your point when i was done she said to me i had someone else you know before cleanse my house and you know, she told me I had to go and like ask permission at every corner, every door. And I said, oh, oh, yes. If, if you want me to teach you how to cleanse your house, you know, I can give you, you know, a, a, a teaching, let's say, on how to do it. But my relationship with Cedar and Sage has gone back for more than 20 years. So when I hold her, that permission has been granted time and time again like i don't need to sit there and like you know you know ask for her because we are one we had already made a contract with each other that mm. when she needs me i give and when i need her i give and we work together you know mm. so it's mm. and and she was like can you explain what that means and so exactly. i you know i, I mean i want I, I think i'm all ears well you know when you have these relationships with plants and when you spend a lot of time with them and you you listen when you when you hear them and when you can see them and when you can feel them and you really get their messaging then i don't know i've, I've cleansed so many houses including my own so many people mm. there's we, mm. we do a garden gathering we do women that gather mm. usually mm. 150 women once a year and i yeah. will i will you know, bless every single person that comes um, mm. with sage, you know, mm. after year, after year, after year, after doing this, you, you mm. have this relationship. I know mm. when, totally. when the sage burns someone, I usually tap them and say, you need to come see me later. And then I see where it's burned them. And then I know that there's an ache in that place or there's stuck energy in that place. And I help them to remove it. It's like sage, she will only burn you where you need healing. Mm. You know, or if she flames up, it's like, whoa, you know, you need to do more work with them. Right. You know, it's not like a good thing. It's like when your whole sage right. stick burn, you know, it's, a, I mean, it, it's only through, again, practice and using and talking and, and hearing that. You know, I, I, I was interviewing Lynn Buchanan. Uh, Lynn Buchanan, uh, you probably don't know, but he was one of the original top secret remote viewers for the military, uh, which ran a, like a 20 year program, uh, mm -hmm. incredible program, like totally top secret. And again, I feel like I'm hearing kind of the same thing as you, you, you have to make a connection and then you get the information from the connection and you have to deepen the connection. And, and as you do it, you, um, it changes you as a person, you become, yes something else i mean you're still a person yes. but you know um and i'm i'm just feel i feel so reminded and it's, it's like and the other thing is it's like interpreting the symbols so instead of going oh it's burnt someone you go ah oh, that that's what is that about yeah and then you go into that little part of the story and it may be sometimes you go oh it's just burnt you and um and someone is like yeah no this is actually something yeah um, so that's beautiful. Yeah, and you know, this is amazing. Why didn't we meet? Well, you know, meet. the funny yeah. thing is, is when you were in Hong Kong, my life took a completely different turn. Right. So I, right. after I finished from the last herb class with Michael Moore, I was, again, the wind came and pushed me and I got into spas and I just, for the last, God, I don't know so many years i've been running and creating spas and with that i've been learning every type of energy work massage technique right. uh, sound bowl I, I, gongs anything you can imagine i've learned practiced but um i was really in the the you know uh corporate stage for such a long time right, so right it sounds like it you're, you're almost, taking a chief role than than an indian role as it were like yeah sorry, so i just got taken <laughs> on this ride um away from you know what what i thought i would end up doing and 
it wasn't until mm -hmm. I had a magical experience with my third child that I I knew that my time magical experience. had come. I want to know about the magical experience. Yes. Tell me. Well, I've had a Can lot. Can you? I mean, I don't want to like like yeah, people no, will never talk to you again I, if you. No, I'm I'm a open book because I want people to know. I want people. Yeah, same here. To, same here. Totally. I, you know, yeah. So, um, and this, this was, um, I had nine miscarriages between my second and third child. Wow. Yeah. And I loved every single one of those souls that came through me. Um, and I got into terrible grieving and then mm, in mm. pure light again and would try again. Mm. So my poor husband <laughs> who um, mm. had to endure this with me, um, but it was amazing, amazing yeah. guy. Amazing. Yeah. That is, is, that is really, yeah. really tough. I know from working in that area and doing, uh, actually I was doing, um, manipulation, um, you know, visceral manipulation on the pelvic, pelvic organs and that, you know, yes. and, you know, it's such a incredibly sensitive area. Yes, so, it is. Um, and but, for but, my so, first child, um, I was in Mexico. We were, we were living in Mexico mm -hmm. and, um, I really wanted to get pregnant and couldn't. And so I found a uh, Mexican midwife and she did a abdominal massage on me, a uterine massage. Yeah. And she said, este mes no hay sangre. She was very old. You know, this month there'll be no blood. And that okay. following month I was um, conceived my son, my first. So I knew there was something to, she did some magic and yeah. she did the magic and there was my son. Um, and then when I wanted my daughter, my, I also had trouble. And um, I just couldn't, I couldn't get pregnant no matter what I tried, what herbs, anything, you know. And um, then I found my uh, Filipino therapist, Linda, who I was talking to her in the canteen. And I said to her, I need to fly back to Mexico to go see um, my, my midwife. And she said, I can do that. I learned that in my village in the Philippines. So she did it Amazing. and she called down Jesus and she did all these things right? and massaged my uterus. And the next month I was pregnant with my daughter. Externally, externally we're External. talking. Yes. Okay. So I, Cause like people sometimes have this idea. I, I actually, I've got to, I've got to give a shout out for um, my friend Kunwari who is doing uh Chine Zankasai. I don't know if you've heard of that mm -hmm. and she does incredible work, but you working, she says like she will learn with the, um, the master that, that basically yeah. made it famous. Um, her uh, Kun, Kunni. And she, they massage the whole of the digestion system and then the exits, because you gotta, you know, like the, you gotta clear it uh, till the end, yeah. And so it would be the uh, genitals would be included naturally. Only we're very, very, um, it's a taboo area. So, but it's very clear that that was uh, an external treatment. And my my work has always been external as well yeah well i think you know for for the purposes of the uterus it can be external you don't need to go internal for yeah. that unless it's like an emotional thing and there's like you know blockages that you need but but this was m more of a a physical thing it, it's a motor you know you can sit like it's like a motor it's a, a car you know if you if something's out of you know tune right. you gotta it, it, it's incredibly it um i mean the anatomy is incredible the uh, the pelvis. I mean, I'm I'm digressing a little bit, but the pelvis is under enormous pressure in the body. Yeah. it's probably the the biggest pressure that the whole body has. And then if something's twisted, then they have to balance that blood flow and the fluid flow 
despite right. the twisting and everything everything yes. gets and that's what i found but i mean mm. i i kind of and 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 really um what i love about your story is it's connecting with the energy as well because i think that's yes. where a lot of people forget it's, it's like that's they right. think it's just it's just i've just got to mechanically turn a couple of bolts and it's going to be fine and, and that's not my experience that that generally doesn't have a powerful lasting effect no and so here i am you know let's say let's, my sister my sister my daughter was um she was probably four when we started trying. So for two years, I tried nine miscarriages. Uh -oh. And the thing oh, is, is that I was in serious corporate P&Ls, meetings, mm. business suits, very structured and trying to get pregnant. Mm. And at the same time, I had forgotten spirit. You know, like I, I just, you know, I was so focused yeah. on ego and getting and gaining and making, and I mm. just became something that I wasn't. And I was balancing that by doing full moon circles and, but even that was like ego. I don't know how to explain it. I was like, yeah. I was in this, you know, well, I, my face Chuggy, had to Chuggy be and Trumper, he wrote a he everything wrote a book called you know, uh, spiritual materialism and that's like when you're trying to get the next upgrade and it's like um, exactly drop it drop it all drop it all first yes. and then when you're ready when you don't care then you can have a bit and then by the way probably you're gonna you're gonna go oh i want more of that and he said okay then you have to drop it all again and here's a yeah. wonderful master that, but yeah I, so yeah, i totally get that so i was in it i was in that spiritual materialism you know and i you know, I couldn't have been bigger, you know, I couldn't have been more known. And, you know, I just... Yeah, I think you're famous. I thought, so, oh my God. You know, it's so important, right? Mm. It was so mm. important. And then um, I met this woman who um, was a tarot card reader. And um, I was doing all these masters of wellness and introducing, you know, you know, wellness people to the rich and famous and healing all of them and blah, right. blah, blah. And then this woman came to me and she said, I want to do your, your reading. I said, sure. I, you know, why not? Yes, I'd love it. And so she does the reading and then she goes, wait a minute, stop. I, I need to do something else. Can you just sit back and go on a journey with me? And I was like, oh, journey. Yeah. You know, <laughs> let's right, go. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, um, you're in your element. Yeah. And so we go on a journey and she tells me, um, this woman doesn't know me. She may, she may have done some research about me, right? But mm. there wasn't that much about me, me, right? There was a lot about corporate me, but not yeah. about me. Yes. And I, yes. Um, she told me that she took me to ancient Rome or it was actually... Um, Israel, what was not then Israel, but mm. she took me to a place and said I was a priestess and that I was raped by a Roman soldier and got pregnant. And I had this whole apothecary and she explained this apothecary. Now, nobody knew I was doing herbs then at that point, but she saw me in this apothecary that helped women who were birthing and children and I was raped oh. and I died during childbirth. And oh she didn't God. know that I had miscarried nine times. Right. So she said that the spirit in my blood is asking me to go back to the place of which I died, sit on the ground and feel the wind. And that would be removed from me. You just totally that give me day, the, the, the I was leaving shower. to Israel. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, my God. The next day. Oh, my God. That's wonderful. So I go it's to creepy Israel. creepy and wonderful and lovely. I mean, you know, for some people, it's going to be creepy. But for me, it's wonderful. Well, you know, how would she have, you know, like, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was meant to be. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. then we, we go to Israel, we do a whole tour of Israel. And on the last, 
like few days, were in the mountains in Spat, mm. which is where Kabbalah was found, the, the, oh. the mysticism of Judaism. Mm. Mm. And we go to this town on Friday night, which is Shabbos, and no one drives. I mean, it's a very orthodox town, so you can't drive during Friday night. You know, there's, mm. you can't do that. So we right. were like, ooh. So we, we leave town. We realize we have made a huge error. And we passed on the way in there a forest. Okay. And so we decided to go there instead. And there was a park. So the kids were playing in, with the park. My mother and father were with us. And my mom and I decided to take a walk. And as we were walking, I saw a place, a clearing. And so I just asked her, you know, could we sit? And as we sat, a wind came over me and almost knocked me over. Oh my God. And my mother said, what are you doing? And I said, did you not feel that wind? I've got to tell you and a story said, later what about my wind. About? You oh know, I mean, if you know God. my mom, she yeah. <laughs> Out. Yeah, yeah. Get, get up off the floor. It's <laughs> dirty there. And I was like, you didn't feel so I start crying. I, oh I my put my God. hands on the ground. I am I just I almost was like puking crying. Oh my God. It came over me so strong. Mm. So I get up, my mom is like, what has gotten into you? I explain the story. She's like, You're crazy. Let's go. And off we go. Right. I'm, I'm not done. We go to Greece. We have a great time. I conceive. I know that I'm conceiving. Yes. I, I know the point and the moment that I conceived yep. this yep. magic child. Yep. And we come back. We're staying with our friends, the Malkas. That's their last name in Israel, and we're flying out in three hours. I'm sorry, the story's taking long, but no, no, I, you, you, I'm, I'm spellbound. So here we are, three hours to leaving. And Yael Malka, my darling friend, said, cover your head, cover your shoulders. We have to go see this rabbi. And I was like, I'm leaving. Why didn't we go see yesterday? No, 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 no. <laughs> we need to go now. And I said, what has gotten into you? And she said, you've got to cover your head and your shoulders. Let's go now. And I said, we have three hours. And my husband said, just go. It'll be fine. You know, don't worry about it. So I leave the kids and off I go. And her three kids and the boys, so all the boys are together and the kids. And we drive 25 minutes to get to this man's house. And he's a rabbi. He's in the house of his mother. She had just caught him in the house of him, uh, the mother. The mother is like very old. He's old. So we sit down. He doesn't speak any English. We're in a very, very orthodox neighborhood. And he says to me, what is the, your name and the name of your husband? Well, my husband's name is Gonzalo, but his Hebrew name is Daniel. So I just said Daniel because, I, you know, here we are. We're in Israel. We yep. use our Jewish names, right? Oh, you were in so Israel, not said, in Greece. We were in Israel. We had flown back to Israel. We're oh. flying out. Okay. okay. So here we are. My husband, um, he says, did you have uh, your children by another man? Because I told him his Hebrew name. And I said, no, 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 no. His name is Gonzalo. Ah! Uh -huh. So this, this so guy good. was very, so Jewish, he asked yeah. for my hands and he uh, read my palms. Uh, this is a, this is a rabbi, right? He's reading yeah. my palms and he tells me I'm going to be fine. I'm blessed, blah, 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 blah. And then he says, why do you, why do you come to see me? And I said, I've had nine miscarriages and I want a baby. The only thing that I want, I don't know why I want a baby. Like, <laughs> right. I have no idea why I keep trying to have this baby. It's not me, because if it was me, right. I would have stopped, you right. know, but right. I must have this child. Mm. And, but why is God not giving me this child? Mm. And I screamed to God and said, enough is enough. You know, I have done everything you've asked me to do. Why are you not giving me this child? And there's a woman, Hannah, in the Bible who actually yep. says that to God. Yes. So I yes. followed her. Yes. So he says, okay, come back in two hours and, and, and we'll go to my synagogue. And I said, no, 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 no. I'm leaving. I'm, I'm leaving. And he goes, oh, well, do you have a car? Let's go now. 
So we jump in a car, he sits in the back and he says, do you have any questions to ask me? Here we are, we're driving. And I said, well, I want to know, I, the, all these years I have healing hands. I never use them. What's going on here? And so he says, oh, you know, say this prayer, open this book. And I opened the book and in the, in the Torah. And when I open it, it was Elijah who's this wonder worker, right? I, I know, Elijah, like, yeah. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Your hands are given to you from God. You right. must start healing. Right. Boom, right? Oh. First smack in the face. Oh my God. So then we get to his synagogue. We go through this corridor and we get to this beautiful synagogue. He says a prayer. He opens the ark. You don't open the ark unless it's a very special occasion. He takes this cover off the ark. He says a prayer and he puts it aside and he says a blessing on me. Then he closes the ark. He says another prayer. He takes that covering, puts it in my hand. And he says, he doesn't put it in my hand. He can't touch me. He puts it down. He says, don't tell anyone ever within these next three months, you wear this thing around you, you leave the not very big, you cover yourself, you only take it to shower, don't even tell your husband, and you say these prayers, and he gives me the prayers. Then he went over to where he stands, he had herbs in a bucket, he takes the herbs and he says, in a bag, he puts it down. When you get home this Friday night for Shabbat, you boil these herbs, you drink one cup, and then you bathe yourself. The wind, was in you. Ah. <laughs> awesome. And Malka was born. Wow. Yes. Wow. How beautiful. What an incredible story. I don't know. So when I, I got Malka, I said, I'm done with this work. Like, I'm so, I'm not supposed to be here anymore. You know, I mean, and so I quit. And um, that was hard for everyone. And it right. was perfect timing, right before the protests, right before the virus, mm. you know, before Malka was born. And, um, and then I just, without even trying, uh, Tove Earth, you know, my new, you know, blessed business of healing people with- Trove Earth. Tove Earth. How do you spell that? E-O-V, which means good in Hebrew. Tov, 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 and and so people go. It, okay, let, I, I want to send people to you. So okay. I, if if people wanted to, they said like, I, I just yeah. incredible. I'd love to feel those hands, which I would. Yeah, yeah. or I'd love to have those those herbs. I, I'd like. I, I've got a this. I I feel it. Like this is this is my um, uh, my penguin. Of on the on the uh, part of my penguin on the energetic journey. Although you know we we're, we're saying like like you've had many teachers. We all have many teachers. And we feel drawn to people. So if somebody felt drawn to you, how would they connect? Can they uh, connect on question. Skype? Can they can they Skype? I don't you? have Skype. Um, Zoom. But I have a very um, large. Actually, it's not large. I have a WhatsApp account where anyone can join and I do monthly meditations for the moon. I do follow the lunar cycle. Um, Rosh mm. Kadesh, which is the new moon for Jewish women, mm. um, is a very sacred time. So mm. I share insights mm. um, and I do spirit journeys during that time. And that's mm. free for anyone that ever wants to join. Mm. It used to be in my house uh, mm. with social distancing. Now I do it on Zoom. Okay. So that's monthly. And then I teach herb classes once a month. Um, and I have a, a small group of women primarily, but I would be happy to have men that uh, we learn, you know, different ideas and thoughts and receive three blends um, and then we talk about those things and then we do a plant spirit meditation, a deep meditation, which I think mm. most people really want. Um, mm. and mm. so that's also on zoom once a month. And then I'm also doing these, uh, wellness masters and I can't call it that. I need to find a new name, but it's all my teachers and my friends. Mm. Um, they offer their, their classes on this group, um, with this group. Um, and, and I kind of just give them a voice, let's say a Amazing. platform. 
Amazing. And then there is a website that's coming. It's toveearth.com. And it will have herbs. The blends that I've taught in these classes will be for sale. Mm. Um, Crystals will be for sale as well. Um, And then I have, um, you know, the events will be posted there. Um, And I do one-on-one consultations. And I only take a few um, just because I've got three kids and um, a lot is going on right now. But I do do one-on-one consultations. So you, well. it sounds like you're being the wise woman there, and you're still in Hong Kong, right? Yes. Right. So you're st- you're the wise woman in Hong Kong that's got this unbelievable background and a, and a real connection, and so people in Hong Kong can definitely connect with you. But really, it doesn't matter. We've we now we've got the internet. Yeah. It's um it's people from all over the world actually. Right. Um, right. You know, most of the people are from Hong Kong, but. Um, because of, you know, this world um, and because of, you know, just all the work that I've done, you know, kind of around the world with opening spas, um, you know, lots of people are chiming in. You you know, my my feeling is this, you know, I, when I talked to you, I just wanted to share your story with the world. You know, that was Mm -hmm. my feeling is it's like, this is an incredible, this is an, I didn't even know the whole story. I mean, I'm, and the thing is, I think I, you know, you can definitely come back and we can talk more because I just feel there's, you've got lots of stories. Like you, 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 you could talk the, the hind leg of a donkey with those stories. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And I love it. I, but I love it. Day. <laughs> well, I want people to, you know, people learn through stories honestly. And, you know, uh, and, and I, what I love as well about your story is, um, uh, is you had your wilderness, you had your, uh, I'm not really connected with all this. And then, and we, we go through the wilderness and sometimes we need somebody that says, you know, a wind or, or something that says, Hey, there's something else. I know you don't remember it, but it's something else. And if, if, you know, these lovely stories, in a, in a way, it's an anthology of stories from the different guests that I have that said, um, you know, how they got on their path. And, and But what, what I find interesting about your stories, I don't feel you had an awakening. It's like you were, you were already awake and then you got yes. reawakened. Do you know what I mean? I like you, yeah. You know, I, I never felt, I think the truth behind that is I felt like I didn't have enough experience to take clients mm. um, when, when I, way back then. I, I, mm. I just, I didn't feel like I had enough life experience. Mm. I wanted to have children. I wanted mm. to have a relationship with, you know, long-term with my lovely husband. I wanted, I, I, I wanted to become old. I wanted, I, you know, I'm not old, but you know, I'm gonna be 45 this year. I wanted to have that experience, you know, in order to be able to really be able to understand another person sitting in front of yeah, me. Yeah, I feel the, uh, let me say like uh, the archetype is wise woman, isn't it? It's yes, like you, well, there you go. That, that yes. it, it, that's who you are for me. I feel like, oh, you're the wise woman in Hong Kong that I know. Um, and if, if, if somebody's got an issue, then listen to these words. They don't just come from nowhere. They, there's some life experience, but there's also this person's listened to the wind and listened to the trees and listened to the plants. Yes, and, every day. And, yeah, so beautiful. Shoshana, I can't thank you enough. I think I, think I could... I don't want to stop basically. So um, uh, we're going to connect people in the show notes, um, which, which I say it's like, it's the comments here, yeah, description and everything. I'm going to write how people can connect with you and connect with sure. the WhatsApp group. And, um, and I hope people can, um, can, can connect with you. Do you have, I want to ask this one question that sits in my mind. When somebody is said, well, I want to find my way. Um, yes. I always say like, well, it's your own way. You know, it, mm. it's not going to be Shoshana's way. That's just Shoshana's story. Do you have an advice for somebody just trying to wake up what they can do? I think, and, and I believe truly that if you need to find your way, you need to learn how to listen. So what does that mean? If you sit with yourself, um, you know, I'm a long time, long, long time meditator. And if you, if you sit with yourself, 
Um, there's my number two. Oh, she's beautiful. I say, think two. Um, if you sit with yourself um, and, and meditate, um, you will hear what it is that you need to do. Um, and Beautiful. and I, I do think that meditation should be done if you're starting and you need to know where you're headed, should be done with someone who is an experienced meditator to help guide through the the issues that may arise um it's which i've done advice. a lot it's beautiful okay. advice so yeah start start with meditation listen listen breath, listen know. it's so beautiful it's so true okay darling uh sorry i think darling uh, thank you shoshana i feel darling you're a darling, I'm darling. really i'm your darling yes okay well have a wonderful wonderful day and we Thank will so be talking soon